Hello, I'm Josh Stanish. I'm here at the Federation of Fly Fishers in Livingston, Montana, and we're going to tie a little variation of a terrestrial called a Turks Power Ant. Um, I'm going to tie it in a parachute version that I've been fishing this summer, and it's been real productive for me. So we're going to start off, I'm tying this on a uh, Timco 2457 hook, or not 2457, a 100, um, which is their dry fly hook, not the scud hook. Um, and we're going to also use UTC 140 denier brown thread for this. Um, so we'll start by attaching our thread onto the hook here. And get this thread on. <clears throat> now our first step on this I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead to the back here and make the, the round ball on the back end of the ant. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add a little piece of foam onto the back just to make this fly float even that much better. Um, it floats just fine without it. It's probably not a necessary step, but uh, it's one that I've been doing and it seems to be helping a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and trim off our little chunk of foam here. You just want a piece that's going to be about the same width as the uh, ball you're going to make on the back. We'll go ahead and lay this on the back, attach it right at our tie-in point at the rear here. Go ahead and you can just kind of compress and cover up that foam because we're going to cover that up with dubbing. So um, we'll move our thread forward to just about the midway point of the hook. And then we're going to use some super fine dry fly dubbing. I like to use the mahogany brown because it's got a mixture of brown and black in it. Um, and if you notice, most of the ants are kind of on that brownish black side um, and not jet black. So um, I like using this mahogany. It works real well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just put a little dubbing on our thread here and make a nice dubbing noodle. Just remember when you're dubbing that you don't want to use too much at one time because you can always add to it, but it's really hard to take it away. So really be light on the amount of dubbing you use um, and it'll help you out drastically with tying, especially your dry flies. So this isn't going to be enough dubbing, but we're going to start right here about the middle and we're going to start wrapping some dubbing that comes back towards the rear and try and get all of that stuff covered up. Then we can start working, working on making the center a round ball because we're trying to make this almost look like we put a little bead on the hook, um, but you want it to be all dubbing. So we go ahead and add some more dubbing here. Now I'll start building it up towards the center of our little ball here. And it'll make a nice round rear portion of the ant for us. Get another wrap or two of dubbing to get that a little bit larger. All right, so there we have our rear ball of the, the ant pattern. Now we're just going to pull this foam right over the top. Don't compress it too much or you'll take away a lot of its property for making the fly float. And we'll just get that tied on and trim this off. All right, now this fly is going to end up having a wing on it, but we're going to go ahead and put our parachute on the front first, just so we don't have that wing in our way as we're trying to make our parachute. So what I'm using here um, is just some micro Zelon in the fluorescent pink. Uh, this is a great parachute material. Um, it floats fairly well but it's very easy to see. Um, and that's part of the parachute is it makes a fly pretty easy to pick out on the water. So we're going to take a nice little clump of this um, micro Zelon and we're going to tie it on. And we want to leave enough room in front of our posts to make another little ball of dubbing to imitate that other segment of an ant. So get this up eh, probably about two thirds of the way. We're going to lay this material on the top of the hook. We'll come right across the top of it lash it down and we'll come around the back side of our material and then pull this wing forward and this is a figure eight wrap and we're going to make a couple figure eights around this then we'll pull the material around the underside and pull straight up and this is going to allow us to make a nice post here so I'll wrap some thread right in front to help stand this material up nice and straight then we'll come around the back side capture that material and then we'll go ahead and we'll build this thread up. We came off the hook shank and now we're going to go up the Zelon to make a nice post here that we can wrap our hackle around. And go ahead and spend some time and make this good and stiff here because you're going to wrap your hackle around it. And this is going to be a key component of keeping that hackle in place. If this is really limber here, a lot of times your hackle will slide right off it. So Make a nice post on this parachute and it'll help you out in the long run. Keep your flies more durable and make it a little easier. 
Now I want to try and make sure I cover up some of that on the underside there. I'm going to go ahead and attach my hackle right now too, just for ease. Um, I've stripped a nice long saddle hackle that's sized appropriate for this size 12 hook. I like to attach this right in front of my parachute post. And then pull your hackle straight up and bring your thread back off the hook and go right up that post that you made and take that hackle right to the top. And you can come back down your post because I like to wrap this hackle from the top down. All right, so now we've got our post and our hackle on there. They're going to be in your way a little bit, but it'll be a, it's a lot easier to do it this way than to put your wing on and then try and do all those wraps that are going parallel to the hook shank because you'll end up capturing that wing. Now for the wing, um, this is for mainly a flying ant pattern, but it, it also just adds for good visibility when you're fishing a lot of your freestone rivers or if you're fishing in real choppy water. Um, so what I like to do is I'm going to come in here and cut this little tip out. You don't have to be, have a really nice piece of CDC here because we're going to end up trimming it. We're going to lay this right on top of our back here, make a loose wrap over it, get it secured into place. You'll have a lot going on here for a minute, but just hang with it. Come in and trim that CDC out. And you'll have one more little piece of it. And you can go ahead and put a second piece of CDC in here. And don't worry about its length on the back because we're going to come in and trim it. You just want to get it so it's secured on top. So we get all that CDC secured into place there. We'll come in and trim out our excess again here. Then you can pull this whole CDC wing and you're going to trim it so that it goes beyond the little ball in the back here. You're going to trim it off. So you get a nice fluffy wing, and this wing will be really easy to see um, when it's floating out there. You may have a few stray fibers that you want to trim out of the way. Um, and there we have our nice little wing. Now I'm going to cover up these little tip ends here. Try and get that white out of there because there's not a whole lot of ants that have white undersides. So we'll try and get that nice brown color wrapped all the way back the back here. Now the power ant, the original power ant, has a set of rubber legs on it. And I think it's a fairly important component, at least on the Yellowstone. The fish really like to have those two leg, little legs sticking out there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, this is just some uh, small round foam, or round rubber that I'm using. We're going to get a couple pieces of it off here. So you want two pieces of the round rubber here. What we're going to do is lay this right behind our parachute post. Lay both of them in at the same time. You're going to wrap over a loose wrap and a little tighter on your next wrap. Then you'll pull one on either side of your parachute post to give us kind of our X'd out legs like you'd see on a PMX or um, you see on a lot of the dry flies nowadays. So We'll go ahead and do that. We'll bring our thread in front of the parachute post here. Now we have to build up the little round head for the ball on the front of the ant. We're going to just do that with a little bit more dubbing here. Go ahead and attach our, make our dubbing noodle. We're going to make another nice little ball on the front to imitate that ant and his body. So we'll start right up by the eye. Wrap right back onto that parachute post. Make a nice round ball with that thread. Then I'm going to keep my, move my thread up to the front here, right at the eye. And now we can go ahead and we're going to wrap our hackle for our parachute. If this wing in the back is a little unruly, sometimes what I'll do is take a little piece of lead wire. You can come in with your lead wire. Just fold it over all that material. And you can get some of that stuff to lay out of the way here. There's a lot of stuff going on on this fly, but once it's tight, it's a pretty effective little bug. So I'll come in here with my wire. And just wrap that down just to hold everything kind of down and out of the way, and then we can come back and remove it at the end. So now we're going to take our hackle. We're just going to wrap it right around this parachute post.
And I like to work from the top down to the bottom. With each wrap, it's going to help force that next, that first row of hackle back upwards so that our hackles don't end up facing downwards. So I go ahead and I'm going to give this a nice big full hackle. We'll come around our backside. When we get to this point, I just bring it over the eye of the hook, bring my thread up, and try and keep this thread right parallel to that hook eye and come down around the backside to secure that into place. And you can come around the back of your hackle again, make another little wrap right on that, and pull everything back up out of the way. And now we can get our, some nice wraps in here, keep our eye clear, and then come in and trim off your hackle. And we'll go ahead and give it a little whip finish here. Pull those fibers back out of the way so you can get a nice whip finish in here. Make your whip finish. Pull it tight. Now your hack will be kind of messed up here since you pulled it back out of the way. You can just come back in and kind of preen everything back into place where you want it. It'll eventually fall there naturally on its own. Remove this little wrap of lead wire. Now we can trim our post up on our hack on our parachute here. A little trim so now we have our post to see. And then I take my two legs, I'm going to trim them off on the front like that. And then my rear legs, I like to trim them pretty much about even with where this wing is. And that gives us our nice set of legs, nice easy wing to see, plus a big parachute post. This fly floats real well. It's a great fly late in the summer once the hopper bite's starting to slow down. You start getting dead leaves and get a lot of decaying matter on the bank, you'll start seeing ants and beetles in the water. And it's been a very effective pattern for me. So that's the parachute Turks powering it.